Good day everyone, welcome to the first part of the video series, Learning From Others. In this video, we are going to talk about writing the review of related literature. Now before anything else, we are going to answer the question, what is a review of related literature? According to Cresswell, a literature review is a written summary of journal articles, books, and other documents that describes the past and current state of information on the topic of your research study. Furthermore, a review of related literature is seen as the examination of relevant books, scholarly articles, and any other sources pertinent to an area on research. Pretty much a review of related literature provides additional information or support in terms of any particular findings or arguments that we might have in relation to the topic that we are currently searching or researching about. Also, a review of related literature organizes the literature into subtopics and documents the need for a proposed study. In terms of functions, the review of related literature has multiple functions. The first one is that it provides background information about the research topic. Second, it provides supporting data for claims and arguments. Third, is that it provides a framework for the research. Fourth, it could also be a basis for identifying research problems. Furthermore, it could be used as basis for research questions and a source for hypothesis formulation. Another function of the review of related literature is that it identifies the possible scope and limitations of the study, and lastly, is that it can be a source for possible recommendations near the end of the study itself. Now at this point, we are going to answer the question, why conduct a review of related literature? When conducting a research study, a researcher must be aware of the purposes of reviewing a literature. Pretty much we are going to answer the question why. To start off, we have the first one. It builds the confidence of the researcher as he or she fully understands the variables being studied. Next is that it shows similar studies conducted which in turn become the springboard of discussion as the researcher may agree or disagree with the current results. Also, fellow researchers will see the objectivity of the study as they read a review of literature and related sources similar in research or conceptual framework. And lastly, reviewing a body of literature on the topic makes the research study empirical. Now let's focus on the first purpose. It builds the confidence of the researcher as he or she fully understands the variables being studied. Conducting a review of related literature allows a researcher to become familiar with the variables that are involved in the study. This allows a researcher to know and determine the possible relationships of the variables in the study, and as such, knowing about the nature of the variables in the study would help the researcher explain why such variables are included in the study. In other words, knowing more about the research being conducted helps the researcher explain the need for conducting the study itself. Next, it shows similar studies conducted which in turn become the springboard of discussion as a researcher may agree or disagree with the current results. Knowing about the results of other related studies may provide support as to why a certain research is being conducted. Now we have to understand that when conducting a review of related literature, the researcher would encounter different studies which are related to the topic of his research. These related studies would offer different results in which the researcher may agree or disagree with. Knowing about the results of related studies would help the researcher have an insight as to his objectives in conducting this research. This would also help the researcher explain about his assumptions or expectations in his research, whether it is to confirm or verify or even present alternative results to that of existing related studies. Furthermore, this provides an opportunity for discussion regarding the comparison of results from similar studies. Next, 
Fellow researchers will see the objectivity of the study as they read a review of literature and related sources similar in research or conceptual framework. Conducting a review of related literature proves that the researcher is unbiased when it comes to conducting the study. Also, writing a review of related literature lets the researcher discuss the positive and negative results, as well as certain limitations of studies related to the current research. This enables the researcher to determine areas that need to be focused on in further research. And lastly, Reviewing a body of literature on the topic makes the research study empirical. Reviewing related literature is a means for a researcher to verify any theories, claims, or arguments about the research topic. Also, having a review of related literature also contributes to a researcher's formulation of research questions and hypotheses. In other words, a review of related literature verifies or validates a research objectives or claims or arguments that the researcher may have in relation to the topic that he is conducting a study on. Now that we understand and know the different reasons why we should conduct a review of related literature, we now proceed with the next question which is how to conduct a review of related literature. Now, Pulmonis in 2016 cites Cresswell in 2005 wherein he explains that although conducting a literature review follows no prescribed path, there are five interrelated steps that would contribute to how researchers can proceed with the review of related literature. First, we have identifying the key terms when searching for literature, followed by locating or searching for the needed literature, Next would be making critical evaluation when selecting literature, followed by organizing the literature according to themes, and lastly is to write the review of related literature itself. Let's focus on the first step, identifying key terms when searching for literature. Identifying key terms allows researchers to narrow down the search for more relevant sources that may be used for conducting the review of related literature. Also, we have to remember to make sure that the information is specific in order to ensure that the sources would provide the needed information that would help in the completion of the study. Next, once we are able to identify the key terms that we are going to use for searching related literature, we now proceed with locating or searching for the needed literature. Searching the literature means locating and retrieving the information needed for the research. Also, when searching for related literature, the researchers can opt to look for primary and secondary sources of information. To refresh everyone's memories, primary sources of information are first-hand accounts or reports about a particular topic. Some examples would be news reports, journal articles, or original documents that would talk about the actual information regarding a certain topic, while secondary sources are information that was created at a later time. This contains an analysis of the information from a primary source. Some examples would be books, manuals, or encyclopedias. The next step is to make critical evaluation when selecting literature. Once all the needed information has been gathered, a researcher must make the necessary step of evaluating all the gathered information. As a researcher, it is important to understand that not all information are valid and reliable. As such, it is important to determine which information is of good quality. Now, in order to evaluate the sources of information, researchers may use the following strategies. Number one, is to ensure that the journal where the article is published is reputable. How do we determine if the journal is reputable? First, we look at the publisher. We have to ensure that the publisher is established and truly reputable. A publisher that has been cited multiple times because of the quality of the work that they have been producing. Next, is to read the article thoroughly. Reading an article thoroughly would give us an idea regarding the contents of the article itself. 
This in turn would help us to determine whether the article has a similar focus with the study in terms of topic. Also, we have to make sure that we are able to rank the sources based on the degree of quality based on its relevance to the topic or the research that we are currently conducting. We now proceed to the next step, which is to organize the literature according to themes, categories, or classifications. After searching, locating, and evaluating the various sources of information, the next step is to organize the literature review. It is important to see and recognize how the different information from the sources will fit together to form a bigger picture. Now, the following tips will help ensure an effective review of related literature. First off, we have grouping the literature according to the particulars of the study. Second is to identify the themes and patterns in the different literature. We have to recognize that when one writes a review of related literature, it is not merely putting information from related sources altogether randomly. It is important to identify how each related source or each information from related sources are interconnected in order to have a coherent discussion of the ideas presented in these literature. Next, we have to state the relationships among the different studies and identify the gaps in literature. Identifying the gaps in the literature would help us to be able to discuss what needs to be focused on in our study, in our current study. Next is to summarize the sources by using a table matrix or making a literature map. And finally, is to synthesize the literature before writing the actual review. Making a synthesis of the literature before writing the review would help researchers be able to come up with a clear and concise discussion of the ideas that are presented in order for us to be able to present a more comprehensive discussion of the review of the related literature itself. And lastly, we have to write the review of related literature. After the needed information have been gathered, evaluated, selected, and organized, the last step would be writing the actual literature review. Now, much like in any form of academic writing, the literature review usually has three main parts. First, we have the introduction, which provides an overview, defines important keywords, and informs the readers of the limitations of the review. This is then followed by the body, which contains all the discussions on the similarities and differences from the several articles and how they are related to the present study. This is then followed by the synthesis, which summarizes the trend and themes observed from the articles, as well as identify any gaps in the literature. Now, in any form of writing, in academic writing that is, it is always important to include proper citations. Citations meaning to give due credit to the original source of the information that we have borrowed in order for us to maintain our professionalism in writing and avoid cases of plagiarism. In a nutshell, Writing a review of related literature is one way for a researcher to establish his credibility as a researcher by providing supporting evidences to claims and arguments that are presented in the study. A review of related literature is considered as the foundation of a study as through the related literature, a researcher is able to identify a possible problem, formulate questions and hypotheses about a research problem, and provide evidences that would back up research findings. Furthermore, having a good review of related literature validates the authenticity and validity of the research that is currently conducted.